The race was very fun getting the opportunity to in the middle of pretty heavy training, um, drop it down to Phoenix and really just go after, um, I mean, not even like get after it. A lot of it really was just a training run, honestly. Actually, I should probably say something more inspiring than that for Mesa Marathon is gonna be like, why the f did you come then? Molly's just calling after every interview I submit. Like, yeah, I just applied to uh, Dana Farber. Oh, really? <laughs> Hi, Dana Farber. You really don't want to hire this guy. This is a highly gourmet Starbucks grilled chicken platter that I picked up on my way to PT today. So it's been sitting in the car for. Oh no, sir! I bring a cooler bag wherever I go. Be prepared for everything. Okay. Okay. Ready. <laughs> Here's my arm. Mm. And I'll hit Trader Joe's on the way back up. Oh yeah, Pierce is pretty good. Yeah, I've also got Ooh. nice cool beers in the car too. I mean, are you I hop? Are you hop bar? Yes, hop bar all the way, or two sides in a main for twelve dollars. That's pretty good. I usually like my go-to. What I did before trials is usually just like sweet potato, some sort of greens, salmon. I like fish. It's pretty simple. I try to keep it a little bit more cohesive. These are times where you're saying you specifically don't want it. You can't blame me for that. Did you hit up Waffle House after the trials? Actually, yes. That was, so the morning after trials, um, I went with Sally Kim Diego Waffle House. <laughs> it was delicious. Mm -hmm. Oh, race is at 6.30. We have to be there at 5.30, or we have to be there at 5. Wake up at 4. Yeah. See you in the morning. It's left, because we'll go that oh, way. Yeah. Uh, for stressful races, early morning is better, because I'm up no matter what at like three, and then I guess more casual races, I'm up at three anyway, so it doesn't matter, so. <laughs> Where I was two years ago is very different from where I am right now. And so like two years ago going into a race like this, I would have had to taper going into the race um, and then like not been able to resume normal training for a couple days probably. And as we've gotten stronger over the last two years, a big thing is just like, okay, we're, we're using some of these race efforts as, as workouts and we're able to train through. We, I've just got a lot more strength than I did. And so basically going into this race, we did not change anything through the week. I did a hard workout on Tuesday. Um, I did some 200s on Thursday and um, ran 130 something miles. So it was just like the idea of like, okay, we're going to go in, go through the rhythms of treating this like a race, but also realize like I'm gonna be probably on tired legs and we just have to go and, and see how it feels in the midst of heavy training. And being able to go out and run a time that was win, within 30 seconds of a half marathon that I ran in 2020 um, at Houston and be able to train through that, run pretty high mileage that whole week and then come back the very next day and do a 20 miler um, and just treat it like, oh, this is just normal training, this is normal workout. That was really confidence boosting for me be like, okay, we can go out and run fast times um, and still just like resume normal training and my body can handle that now. Like I want like white girl bougie, like a true food, right? That's, yeah. that's kind of white girl bougie. More people the better. Yeah. You mean outtakes of just lines What's Rachel said. Yeah. No, 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 don't, I don't want to be in. What's huge? It's a brunch place, really good. Okay, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. It's slalom, GS, super G, and downhill. Um, okay. I personally was the best at slalom when I raced, and so that's why I love it. Um, also, I think Michaela Schifrin is the coolest human alive. She's real. And so Do it. Did it like make havoc, wreak havoc? Or uh, no, I'm no. just gonna stop by Black Canyon just because yes, all this is going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, but so. just chilling the rest of the day. Good. Yeah. I like it. We'll get I like some coffee it. for the way up. Uh, yes. Good coffee. <laughs> That's what I was just about to say. It looks like one of the royal guard. God save the queen. <laughs> um, Bruh, being such a great coach to you, what does John get as a reward for coaching? What does John get as a reward? John, well, I was just about to say that. John gets a lovely um, post-race breakfast of Waffle House, double hash with chunks, smothered with gravy. What's Country style, country style. Chunks of, what? chunks of ham. I know. I I feel like this every time you say chunks, it's just like of what? But yeah, we on our drive back up, um, we stopped at Waffle House and got Mr. Jonathan Green his prize. Did you partake in that or did you opt out? No, I'd had a really nice turkey panini with pesto at a very nice brunch place that John just refused to eat at. So <laughs> he got he got Waffle House. I got uh, I got a, a pretty good Sammy. Okay, so total mileage on race day. I got up at four. I did a one mile shakeout. That one didn't get on Strava. Um, then got to the race, did a three mile warm up or just under um, 13.1. I did a five mile cool down. I believe four or five miles cool down um, just to make it 20 as one piece for the morning. And then drove back up to Flagstaff, did another three and a half shakeout that night. Um, and then next morning, bright and early, we went to Lake Mary and I did 20 miles. And I had to just grind through with the help of my friends on that one. <laughs> That's well, the, I like feel like, four or five. that's the disgusting thing is like for running 130 sure to 135 yeah. miles yeah. a week, it's like, that just becomes <laughs> like a normal, right. I was trying to explain it out to, to Karen and Rachel this morning. They were like, we were dividing up in the car, like what you run <laughs> per day. And they're like, your life sounds terrible. I'm like, <laughs> I choose this life.